Okay, so we all remember the Eternals debacle, right? Marvel decided to release a movie that was kind of outside the realm of their normal formula. We had some people of color in there. We had a decent plot. We had some queer representation. And y'all dragged it. People dragged it undeservedly because y'all keep trying to force feed Thor, Love and Thunder, Ant-Man 3, and that convoluted ass Loki season two down my throat. <laughs> uh, some people really act like those movies, those things are better than the, the, the Eternals movie. Y'all dragged it so hard in the reviews. And then what's crazy is that when it hit streaming, it literally broke Disney's streaming records. Marvel's Eternals was streamed by 2 million households during its first five days on Disney+. Plus. It was also reported that the film broke the record for most streams by a Marvel Studios movie in the first five days after release, surpassing Shang-Chi and The Legend of Ten Rings, which held the previous record. Um, but yeah, so it's just like, y'all dragged it, but then went and, <laughs> and watched it and broke the fucking record. With all that said, Kumail Nanjiani recently went onto Michael Rosenbaum's podcast to talk about how reading all those reviews affected his mental health and emotional state. Let's talk about it. Okay, so the link to this article will be in the description as usual. This article says one new MCU star said his time working on the phase four project or this phase four project led to trauma uh, thanks to the negative reviews of its release. Eternals star Kumail Nanjiani, who portrayed Kingo in the film, was recently on the Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum podcast. Before diving into his negative experiences surrounding the film's release, Nanjiani reassured Rosenbaum he is very proud of Eternals, proud of everyone's work in it. I love that movie. I'm very proud of that movie. Very proud of everyone's work in it. I'm proud of my work in it. And I've seen that movie a bunch of times because it's my kind of movie. Then the actor looked back on the experience of promoting Eternals, mentioning how Marvel thought Eternals was going to be like really, really well reviewed, which led to an early review embargo and the cast going on a big global tour. It was really, really hard because Marvel thought that movie was going to be like really, really well re reviewed. And so they lifted the embargo really early and they also put it you know, put it in some fancy movie festivals and they sent us on a big global tour promoting the movie right as the embargo was lifted. Expectations were high given the esteem around the creators and talent. There was even buzz that it could be nominated for an Academy Award. Ultimately, Eternals was a failure, not one of the worst comic book movies ever made, but a letdown that earned a 47% critics score on Rotten Tomatoes. As Nanjiani describes it, they set out to travel the world expecting a wave of raves, but everyone quickly realized the reviews were really bad and so we had to sort of like travel the world while they thought we'd be going on a wave of raves and it wasn't true it just sort of was the reviews were really bad Rosenbaum asked Nanjiani if he was aware of it while on tour which he was the actor said he was reading every review jeez you can't do that man damn damn um, and expected this to be a coming out party uh, following the COVID-19 pandemic. I was reading every review. I was checking too much because this thing had become too much in my head. This was also right after the pandemic, you know, so we're coming out after this crazy thing. And I'm like, okay, this is gonna be the coming out party. I worked too hard for this. While Nanjiani uh, did not specifically mention Brian Tyree Henry as fast as the first uh, gay MCU hero, the actor did say there was some weird soup in the atmosphere. Um, so here he says, I think that there was some weird soup in the atmosphere for why that movie got slammed so much. And I think not very much of it has to do with the actual quality of the movie. And he would definitely be right. <laughs> he would be right. Eternals was notably review bombed on IMDb for its inclusion of a gay kiss and LGBTQIA representation in the film. Following the tour and overall experience, Nanjiani decided that he can't approach his work this way anymore. 
Um, he said that he started counseling and still talks to his therapist about his eternal experience. Nanjiani also said that his wife said that he suffered from it. Emily says that, that I do have trauma. That's what he said. Um, but what he says about people being pissed about the movie, but not, it, it doesn't have anything to do with the quality. He, it's so true. And it's like, y'all would really skip over the fact that you know this was outside the cookie cutter thing that marvel usually gave us they tried something new especially with the, with the cast the amount of people that were like main characters they really did a good job showing us their powers showing us um the different personalities in this eternals family like it was just fun it was fun you know they did what they did it was a superhero movie it wasn't perfect of course i think that some of it i think they needed a little more time to develop certain things um, develop the plot more, develop certain characters, but it's just like it was so many characters jam packed in one movie, so it's just like whatever. So, like, it wasn't perfect, it had its flaws, but to for it the way it was dragged, I don't think that was fair at all. I think y'all did the same shit y'all did to it that y'all did with the Marvels. Um, the Marvels is not a terrible ass movie, a terrible movie is Thor Love and Thunder, a terrible, a terrible ass movie is Ant Man 3. <laughs> Those are terrible ass movies, girl. So, I don't know. It's just, y'all, people be pissed about diversity. People, like, girl, black people exist. LGBT people exist. I don't know what you want, what y'all, <laughs> what do you want me to tell you? What you want me to tell you? You want them to not ever appear. And that is so, like, y'all gonna have to get over it. They're going to appear in the real world and they're going to appear in media. Y'all would never survive consuming media as someone like me, someone who's black and queer. All you see on TV are white straight people. <laughs> and like if you if you have one character that appears and it's slightly brown or a little bit they 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 wrist is a little limp you know they, they're a little homosexual all of a sudden people are throwing tantrums as if they don't already dominate the entire media industry it is so pathetic and then so because of that because of y'all weird isms and bullshit bigotry you prevent yourself from even seeing the worth seeing the the good good stories the fun stories around you so i don't know i'm glad he said something about it i'm glad he dragged you out. and to wrap it up the article says this unpleasant experience with eternals brought nanjiani clarity for the future he told rosenbaum that he realized that he can't be so results based in his work anymore because he really can't control it uh, he said, I can control my experience. I can control how I am to the people around me. I can control where I learn from it. Uh, I can control how I work. I can't control what people are going to think of it. And that's just, that's really the T with everything, um, which is why sometimes it's so hard to see things unfold as an art. Like as an artist, as a creative person, you see like where, you know, some of the joy of creating is sucked out of things because it's like money and budgets and marketing and uh you know reviews and review bombing and what the studio wants and what the what the audience think they want and all this like it sometimes really is disheartening to watch people who are creatives go through that kind of yeah you know soul crushing shit with the industry business re reviews side of things because you know you take the joy out of creating and art and all that shit but I don't know. I'm glad he came to the conclusion that he's just going to do what he do, work how he works, enjoy it, um, and then release it. And that's it, because that's all you can do. You can't control what people think of it. But also, I'm glad that he acknowledged that it, the Eternals was treated very unfairly, very unfairly. Like I said, I think y'all treating Marvels or the Marvels very unfairly. And that's half the reason why we'd be so frustrated with Marvel, because it's just like, OK, um, we want some different. We want some, you know, shake it up, girl, shake it up. And then when they try to. Here come the fucking racist ass fan bros, homophobic ass fan bros, mad as hell. So it's just like, Marvel's like, girl, I don't know <laughs> what y'all want me to do. <laughs> so yeah, tell me what you think of this in the comments. So I thought, I was like, wow. I was like, once I saw this uh, headline, I, I knew immediately I needed to bring it to y'all. Please let me know your thoughts. Love you so much. And I'll check y'all out later. Peace. All right, y'all, make sure that you're going to www.zaraxia.com. When you join the wait list there on the site, you will be the first to be notified when I drop my sequel. Also, you'll immediately get chapter one of my upcoming sequel of the upcoming book uh, sent to your email as a PDF. So check that out 
Also, this is a different excerpt uh, from my upcoming book, so you definitely want to pause to read if you're trying to get your life. Uh, keep in mind that this upcoming book, the sequel, is following up the first book that is already released called Zoraxia Wrath of the God King. Um, I released it a couple years ago, a few years ago. It was my, really, it was my introduction to writing uh, fantasy and stuff. So just go easy on me. But either way, as you can see here, it's given 4.9 stars. It's given 4.9 stars. So yeah, check out Zaraxia Wrath of the God King. While you wait for Zaraxia, the vengeance of cold wind, right? And go to Zaraxia.com, sign up, join the waitlist, get your free chapter. Thank you so much.